should be on my Sara's going to check too. Like when 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 we were doing this earlier, I also saw your video stream as being bad. Oh, interesting. But right right now your stream looks good. So Okay, I'm going to not um Sara's going to check right now too. Through Sarah my phone, it seems better. Through my phone, it looks pretty good. It looks, it looks good. I think we're good. Okay. Got to get people back on the on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that happened. Yeah. Seems better. Good. <coughs> <coughs> um, I'm gonna try to share this. Um. Sounds good. Let's see. Share. Share to. Huh. Oh, yeah, it looks much better. Man, why did that happen, Oren? That's a good question. This is your fault. <laughs> I thought we were calling it Restream's fault. <laughs> I thought that's what the plan was. Oh, that's cool. At least on my phone, I see like captioning happening. Ooh. Yeah. That's, that's cool. That's kind of fun. Oh, Keith says it looks and sounds good. Oh, thanks, Keith. Sweet. You're the best. Um, maybe I'll just, I have my phone kind of monitoring the chats. Um, and uh, maybe I'll just respond through my phone, which is using 5G and not my internet. Nice. So hopefully that will that No work. contention issues there. Nice. Okay. Well, someone just holler if it just, Start sounding terrible. Huh? Okay. Rocky start. Yeah. Rocky start. A little bit. It's okay. It's okay. We can recover. Okay. Life goes on. Um, uh, the good news is that this is being recorded, I, I at least know, for real through Restream. So anyone that's wanting to watch this later on, um, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, and uh, yeah, just keep us updated on on how the signal is uh, we'll restart if we need to uh okay Oren, how's your uh friday going i'm drinking right here it's good uh i don't i don't have a drink because i i stopped working and then i started thinking about our topic <laughs> about <laughs> about an hour ago so i mean i've i've thought about it a lot obviously over the last 30 years but uh but i started really you know trying to trying to capture some of my thoughts uh, written down so that I'd be prepared. But yeah, so I haven't really Thanks. had a, a moment to make a drink and then bring it up here just yet. Okay. But I think well, once we're done, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. and also um, people listening in, let me know if, you know, how the volume is between us. Um, nice to have that even. Just, just so new to this restream thing. Anyway, I took a shower for this event. Cool. So just wanted nice. you to know that I, I i did too uh well i showered earlier today but it was for this and other things you know as part of a daily routine of of hygiene oh well thanks yeah. man i appreciate yeah. that yeah for sure uh, um okay well i was going to actually introduce you but i felt i feel like maybe if you want to give people just a brief introduction of yourself and how uh how we know each other and your sure. um sort of music musical career sure briefly yes on. don't go yeah. on and on about it <laughs> i'll try to i'll try to keep it short um so yeah i've been singing since uh i was a, a very small child um mark and i started singing together in the northwest boy choir uh in the in the early 90s um and uh, and we've been kind of singing together ever since um yeah i i, I <laughs> I, I, I would love to say that I've thought about intonation for that entire time period, uh, but there, there are certain moments in, in my singing where I have been more focused on it and, and certain moments where I've been probably not focused on it enough. Um, uh, you know, since, since leaving boy choir and, and getting a changed voice, I sang in the Compline Choir for, for several years. I, uh, I joined the Tudor Choir led by Doug Fullington. Uh, we sang together there uh, as well as the Compline Choir. 
Um, we started the Renaissance Singers together as a as a way to sing more, uh, because we we both love the music and maybe also are gluttons for punishment, uh, and that kind of turned into Bird Ensemble. Um, and I I I love singing, and th these days I I it's less of a uh, of of an aspirational uh, profession. Uh, it's more like the the thing that I do um, to, to bring joy to my life, <laughs> uh, not necessarily money. Uh, and, uh, and, and so the singing work that I do now is, is purely aimed at, at, uh, making myself happy, but, uh, singing in tune is, uh, is an important part of getting satisfaction out of music. So is that nice. enough of an introduction? No, oh, oh, that's great. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think people really see you, um, in, in the kind of, you know, this kind of thing I do. But Oren is a, very much a big player behind the scenes of what we do at Bird Ensemble. He's been there from the beginning. Um, we we're little little shitheads wanting to start our own choir when we were like 20. And uh, yeah. so we did. And uh, <laughs> we just kept going. But we, uh, yeah, but Oren's a big player. Um, so let's see where to start. Um First of all, Oren, thanks for coming on the podcast. And yeah, for sure. Another sort of good news, technical, some technical good news is that I think the YouTube link, there's a YouTube link now that's working. Nice. So it seems like turning it off and on again really does does wonders. I'd IT say. crowd's not, not wrong. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I even have these cool captions. Cool. What? is intonation or in <laughs> what is intonation uh that's a that's a really broad question um i i mean in in my mind when when i hear people use the word intonation uh we're usually talking about uh what it what it means to 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 have a a chord or a moment in music uh sound 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 right or pleasant uh, mm -hmm. And those are those are just as I think broad of uh, words to use to describe intonation as the word intonation itself. But that's that's usually what I how how I usually frame it. And there there are I think a cluster of right answers to getting uh, pleasant uh, pleasant sounding chords. And there's kind of a, a then a larger cluster of I think wrong answers <laughs> for for how for how you get good good intonation and and bad intonation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what good. what what comes to your mind when you when you think about the word intonation? Um. So, sorry. Before. I, oh, sorry. Um, stop. I didn't want to derail. Wanna check. Yeah. No, no, no. I just want to check one. <laughs> Oops. Um. I'm checking to see <laughs> if I can if I respond in this chat if Facebook gets it. Anyway. Nice. Um. So yeah, when I think about it, I, I think I think there's a general term of it indicating the 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 rise and fall of of the voice in speaking. And um, but yes, in the context of musical performance, um, I I see it the same way. I see it as a measure of um, accuracy of pitch. Uh, it's a a marker of how well you are um singing or uh playing which is uh, singing mm -hmm. the right mm -hmm. note mm -hmm. and um i would probably use the words like singing in tune the same mm -hmm. way yeah for sure um you know and so um yeah so i just wanted to cl clarify this term for people that are that that are listening that you know that this is what we mean by by intonation yeah. it's sort of a fancy way of saying you know how well you're singing in tune, or how yeah. you know how's your pitch? Yeah, it it feels like intonation, intonation generally, uh, it, it has a context which implies either good or bad. Yeah, like if you're if you're criticizing the intonation, then you're talking about the you know how poor the tuning was from from your perception. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Brent, thanks for watching. I can see the notifications on the chat um, for people who are, oh man. Also, if anyone is curious, I can do a chat overlay. 
I'll look at that. But I don't think any of the comments are showing, so maybe that's not working also. But it does say new comments will be displayed there. Oh, yeah. It, did, it didn't say that existing ones would, would show up. Well, maybe we'll, we'll, uh, we'll keep it up here for a bit. Keep the floor open. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so how important is it? I think a lot of people... Um, some people... I, I ask this because some people don't... Th you know, say it's important, but they don't really treat it as important. Um, mm -hmm. They they kind of say, oh, you know, it'll kind of come. Um, how much time and focus should we spend on it? Um, what's your feeling about any of that? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I I kind of feel like there there are actually two separate things that you may have just mentioned. Like the question of how important is it is one thing. And then the the question of how much time should we spend on it, I think is a, I think might be a different thing. Um, you know, maybe one informs the other, but uh, but uh, I think certainly, I, in okay, in my mind, as as a as a uh, 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 as a as an experiencer of of music, like as a concert goer, intonation yeah. is probably one of the the most important things uh, for, for me to like sort of have a good time and, and, and enjoy myself when I'm listening to music. Um, mm -hmm. and that's mostly because bad intonation, uh, kind of breaks the illusion, uh, in, in a way that, that, um, you know, like, a uh, if, if there are, if there are problems with a movie or a TV show where you're like, well, that's not realistic or that's stupid or that character would never do that. And it takes you, it takes you out of the moment. Yeah. Uh, it, bad intonation does the same thing for me in a musical performance. I it's hard for me to enjoy uh, whatever dynamically might be happening, uh, or ever however clever the music might be. Um, it, bad intonation is is I think distracting. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, I think it's yeah. important to to me. I, that, <laughs> that's I think it's subjective, but to me, it's very important. Yeah. I and for me too. I mean, it, it's uh, ensemble, as you say, uh, kind of a taste issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, singing in tune and in time, you know, are, are the foundations of music uh, and singing. And uh, I think it's undersold how important that is often. And um, so I think it's worth... Um, thinking about i think people can go too far if they you know if they're really trying the human voice can only be so reliable to to you know i bet nobody can hit exactly 440 more like more than one time like like twice in a row for sure yeah you like know. even if even if you were to play it for them Yes. Uh, right before they sing it. No, I a hundred percent agree. I mean, I think you and I have always talked about this, but, uh, but, but maybe it needs to be said more often. Singing is a hundred percent a, a percentage game. It is a, yeah. like, pardon the sports metaphor, but it's, it's, it's much more like shooting a basketball into a, in a basket, into a basketball hoop. Like you can, mm -hmm. you can mentally know everything that you need to know in order to shoot a basketball. Like you, you can know exactly like perfect posture. You can know that intellectually. You can know, uh, you have like perfect eyesight, so you can see exactly where you're aiming. If mm -hmm. you don't actually get on the court and like take shots, uh, and 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 apply uh, deliberate, focused, consistent attention to to do this over and over and over again, uh, you you will still be terrible, and and your percentage will be low. Um, mm -hmm. And you will, like you said, you'll never, you'll never be a hundred percent. You're never going to be singing in tune a hundred percent of the time. You can only hope to improve the amount of, of time you spend singing in tune. Yeah, no, I, uh, that's a really good, that's a really good way to think about it. It's a great way to think about also um, just musical performance in general, that it's a percentage game yep. and uh, you know, no one's going to be, no one's going to bat a hundred. Yep. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a great, great thing. Great way to approach intonation. Um, 
what um how do we know when something when something sounds bad yeah that's a that's a good question you know uh, <laughs> there there are nuanced answers to that uh that go along the lines of well some people prefer you know, say thirds that sound like this, uh, and some people prefer thirds that sound like that. I don't think that's really probably what we're what we're talking about, though. Yeah. Um, uh, I think, in my mind, uh, when when something sounds bad to me, um, it it th- you can usually hear sort of uh, audible audible beats uh, in chords. You can you can hear kind of rhythmic chaos. Uh, yeah in the in the combining of of notes between vocal parts yeah and i think a part of this has to do with developing an ear for it so to speak Mm -hmm. um developing your own sense of what sounds good to you Mm -hmm. Uh, and this this is really um something that you have to that takes a lot of time Mm -hmm. a lot of time playing around um you know and there are, um, you know, I, I'm constantly um, trying to Im- like kind of refine it. I don't deliberately, for me, with tuning, I don't deliberately sort of work on it, but I'm in the environment so much that I have to think about it all the time. And I think, yeah. it, you know, the more people can do that, the better. But, mm-hmm. you know, um, it just requires a lot of attention, yeah. You know, to, to, to develop that skill. And then you can start getting a sense of what sounds good and what sounds bad. And I really do believe, you know, musician or not, anyone can learn um, to have this kind of sense of what's in tune and what's not. Um, and maybe we'll, we can talk about some ways to, to how to tune your ear or how to, you know, how to kind of uh, develop that skill. Um well, I yeah, make... I mean, yeah, go I, ahead, I, I, I was just going to jump in like uh, something that that you and I have both advised people over the years uh, in in, you know, bar side conversations uh, it, it, I, is to to pick up a guitar. Uh, like I, I think I think tuning a guitar is such a great way for for um, for people to to figure out what they think sounds good. Uh, and what they think doesn't sound good. It's uh-huh. it, it is it is so interesting the process of tuning a guitar. You know, it, it you can't you can't really develop that with with a um, you know with playing a, a percussive instrument like a piano, where generally speaking, the the player isn't the one also tuning the instrument uh, mm-hmm. just before you play. With a guitar, you know, you really have to kind of choose where you want all the notes in a chord. Uh, before you go out and 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 play a song um and you it it becomes really obvious uh like for for instance actually I, if you indulge me uh yeah, one second this is great so, this is great so um i'm just going to drop this down briefly because i don't have because i don't have a new battery <laughs> in the pickups in this thing but it's super clear if you if you play this chord and then you make adjustments to it. Let's just let's just change the third on the top. Really. <laughs> like like now, <laughs> now right? It's fourth, it's actually third, almost a fourth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So let's make it even let's make it even kind of more in the crack. Right? You can you can immediately get a sense of oh like that's that's bad intonation. That's t- that's bad intonation. Nice. Or God, I love you. Came with a with a little yeah. demo. Uh, but like, I mean, just just to to close up on this, like, I I think uh, for people that want to develop that sense of what they like chords to sound like, you just pick up a guitar and play around with it until it sounds good to you. Like, well, that sounds that sounds a lot better. Anyway. I, I still think I still think that's one of the best ways to develop that that sense of like what you think sounds good. Yeah, I think I think um, that also is how I developed my sense of what sounds good when I was young. Yeah. In fact, y- you confront a guitar and you spend tons of time tuning one chord, and yeah. it's just the way you like it. Perfect. And 
And yeah. then you start playing a full song that has multiple chords, <laughs> and then it sounds like hot garbage. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, it's, you, it's a yeah. yeah, it's a perfect experiment showing you how you you can't uh, you can't have a static sense of where the pitches are. Yeah. Like in, unless you're unless you're performing a piece of music that has one chord, you there has to be some uh, dynamism with like where you place pitches and how you tune things as you go through a, a piece of music. Yeah, I really highly recommend everyone. Uh, I'm sure probably most of the people who will listen to this has tuned a guitar before, but to really think about it, you know, and how um, that is a good place to start for hearing pure chords or intervals and chords chords that sound um harmonious without beats without dissonance um uh so you know step one tune a guitar um, yep. i think that's a great way to do that um another good uh so i think another important note is that we have to approach tuning uh, in sort of in in two ways. We have to think about it horizontally and vertically. Um, horizontally meaning if you're going to sing a line by yourself, you know, and you have your tonic, you want to end <laughs> in the same place you began if it ends on the same note. So that is that is. A different that sort of like one dimension of tuning, and then there's tuning uh, up and down. You mm -hmm. know, like if you are in a chord that you want to have to, you know, you want to have to fit in those chords as well while you're singing this sort of horizontal line. Um, you know, that can be really tricky, and it's not always easy what note to pick to tune to vertically, like which part mm -hmm. are you going to tune to. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, that. I think the challenge of you know singing in a choral setting in a, in an ensemble setting. Uh, how do you do? You have any tips or tricks? Uh, yeah, no, I, I um, <laughs> I don't know if there are tips, tips or tricks. Like uh, the the way that I think about it uh, is that generally speaking, vertical tuning uh, mostly happens after the fact. Vertical tuning allows you to know which way you need to make adjustments. Uh, because you can't you can't obviously tune vertically until there is a vertical time slice to tune to, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, the way that I think about it is that horizontal tuning uh, sort of gives me a, a starting point for the pitch that I like the uh, that where I should attack the note. Um, yeah. And then and then immediately I'm I'm paying attention to uh, all of the parts around me uh, vertically to tr to try to fit to to fit like. Uh, where I initially put things just right into that place where I think it, it should be vertically. Um, the, the other thing I wanted to, to say just before we move away from talking about vertical tuning is um, that, that that can be an almost impossible task if there's not enough agreement between all the parts about yeah, what you're point. trying to do. <laughs> like in, in a situation where everybody's kind of in their own pitch universe, it, it, vertical tuning is is basically impossible so you know take that with a with a grain of salt um, yeah and i think it's easier to really hone the skill to really understand it the better group you're in yes 100 um, like, it's so much easier to fit your third in or fit your fifth in if everyone else is singing the right notes yeah yeah, because you know, then there's a structure. There's a verticalness to 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 fit into. Yeah. 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 I mean, if 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 you know, if the if the notes around you are kind of all aiming at different versions of the same chord, you you could only choose to tune to one of them. You know, one of those ver the one of those versions of that chord, and it's still going to sound bad. So, I I think yeah. you're totally right. Like the the better the better the group, um, the the easier it is to to tune vertically. How's the audio out there? Is it still okay? How's it for you, Oren? It's gotten. Do it's gotten. I... You got. You've gotten a little bit. A little bit worse. But it's Damn mostly. It. It's mostly on the video side. Like I. I feel like I'm still hearing your audio pretty good. Okay. 
man. Yeah. Ugh. I I actually I I there's there's one thing about horizontal tuning that I would love to talk to you about because Please. I I don't know if we I don't know if we 100% agree on it. We we probably do, but I I think of horizontal tuning two different ways. I I think of horizontal tuning where you're using an anchor point to measure from, like a common anchor point. Uh, so, you know, say something is, is like very firmly in like D minor, you might mm -hmm. decide that you're going to really try to like remember the, the, the D that you sing around. And every time you go away from that note, you're measuring, uh, you know, steps away from that D in your head that you're holding on to. Um, uh -huh. and I, I think that's, that's probably when you're imagining horizontal tuning, that's probably mostly what you're thinking of. Is that right? Um, horizontal, horizontal tuning. I'm, I'm thinking about their reference points. I'm trying to hit constantly. Uh -huh. So what are those reference to... points? Are they like a, is it a static thing or. So actually if I'm, you know, this is part of the difficulty about it because yeah if it's just a solo like if yeah. it's just a solo then i'm just like okay well i've got to come back to the same dough try to come uh -huh. back to the same so uh -huh. and then and then um and then kind of fit it fit everything else around it um but you know i don't have the capacity to really i guess to really focus on every note being an anchor point to totally but, yeah but, uh, yeah but that's how i approach that but like yeah. if if there are other parts happening i um i think my my horizontal line gets tempered based on my um effort to tune to what's happening around me vertically yep vertically no i i i, I totally get that i i would throw out that there is one other type of horizontal tuning that uh, that i use more in situations where i have to worry vertically um, mm -hmm. it, and it is, and it is previous note tuning. It, it basically, I, I don't worry as much about anchor points that I'm measuring from so much uh -huh. as I'm saying, uh, this last note I sang was here and I decided that that was in tune in this chord. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to measure up or down from that. And then I'm going to adjust really quickly based on the next chord. And that, that is usually something I, I use when, like when the tonality of a piece is shifting really fast or really quickly, uh -huh. um, because then then the anchor the anchor point tuning where I'm deciding okay well you know D's and A's should always kind of be here, uh, that mm -hmm. may not be true right like if if the tonality is is shifting a lot and we're all vertically tuning, um, yeah, and that's that's I think in when when I when. When I use previous note tuning, and I, I can't say this explicitly, but I'm pretty sure that this other pre people this do is, this too. This is new to me. Previous note tuning. I mean, that's just no, sorry. That's not a thing. I, love, I just no, yeah. no. I, I like it. I yeah. like it. Um, yeah. So I I think this is why pieces migrate sometimes, because I think I think when people are doing horizontal previous note tuning, even though they don't call it that, because that's that's a ridiculously wordy name, but. Uh, <laughs> I well, I think what happens is people measure to the they they measure from the the last note they sang, and then everybody realigns vertically, uh, and and then you can have these like small changes that happen that add up over time, uh, as a result of this, and 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 then pieces can kind of, you know, just jiggle around a little bit. <laughs> I, I think see. when you have yeah, go ahead. So are you is this kind of the phenomenon when um. You know, oftentimes, you know, as choir approach cadences, I've noticed that the tendency, like, you're going five to one. Mm. You're like, five, one. Mm -hmm. And then the one feels like it's shifted down a little bit. Or like, you know, so, like someone has reset the one and everyone has hopped on board. Yep. yep. So, like, how is the, how is that sort of notion how is the the notion of previous tuning kind previous of no tuning applying there yeah. yeah that's that's a good one um i'm 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 not sure i do i i share your observation though that that generally yeah when chords like find that really nice nice like good solid intonation at the end there's usually a shunking down that happens 
Yeah. I'm not I'm not sure exactly why that. I'm not I, I don't know if it's it's because it's a phenomenon that arises from previous note tuning, but I I I do think uh I, I have observed the same thing, certainly. Um yeah. I I, th I think sometimes that that might be due to to um you know how like I I personally think that like thirds can come down a little bit. Uh I think mm -hmm. sometimes octaves can come down just a, a hair mm -hmm. uh and and I think and and those kind of things uh it can can sort of cause everybody to just kind of go just like those 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 parts that are singing those pieces just go uh, and then everyone goes oh and then it's solid once it once there's a, a mm -hmm. sense of 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 stillness or staticness in the in the tuning i i think that's why the shunk happens at the end yeah but um interesting anyway yeah yeah i i, I want to talk more about that with you someday about that, yeah about yeah that about that idea i like it i like it um, I think another another sort of tool, another exercise um, I just want to get out there um, is singing against a drum. I mean, if you can get a constant note that you can sing against, it's a really good way to um, kind of learn the sensation of singing something in tune. So the first skill is actually being able to hear things in tune. And then the second step is being able to kind of sing you know, be a part of the note, to actually produce the note yourself that's in tune. And I think singing against a, a static drone is a great way um, to do that. And it, and it forces you to put attention to what the harmony as a whole is doing instead of just your own singing. I think oftentimes people are so caught up in the reading. Um, all of the other parts about singing and making music oh it's bad again i hear it's i think it might be bad again is uh, is that was, there was a little it... there was a blip uh, you're you're fine keep keep going keep going um, our stuff's been sounding so good but uh in my head but i don't know anyway if there are other people listening let me know if it's choppy and gross maybe we should just do these like live and person yeah i know i should just come over to your house or something yeah just that, that probably would have worked better um, next time yeah but uh yeah if anyone's at, l looking for a tip against a drone record it and what it sounds like you know and that is that's a great way to get a feel for it um yeah i totally agree yeah yeah actually i uh, this is this is dumb but it's slightly entertaining uh i i don't know if anybody else has ever done this but like uh i remember when i was a little kid you know my mom's vacuuming or whatever and the vacuum has a pitch, uh, you know, you sometimes like, you try to like harmonize with the, the vacuum cleaner uh, and, or, and or sing against it. Uh, at, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a moving target, but, uh, but there, there is a little bit of that, that exercise of, you know, this is where the pitch is. This is what happens when you, when you measure away from it. This is what sounds in tune. This is what sounds out of tune and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think, I think that's absolutely great advice though. But sing, sing against a drone. Yeah. And I, and I think of it as like a three-step process. Like, learn how, learn what, learn what sounds in tune by with a guitar or something, a string instrument, and then try to reproduce in tune with it. And then the third step for me is 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 hard and takes a long time. But try to um, try to sing in tune with someone with with a non-static instrument. Like a, another singer, where where you know the pitch may just kind of travel on its own somewhere else, or you know everyone has sung in an acapella setting, and you know you end you ended not where you began, and uh, the 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 key is to still stay the course and to keep singing in tune. Um, so, um, I I would actually love to tag on to that uh, that 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 it is not in my mind it is not a cardinal sin for a piece of music to have migrated up or down like yeah. in, in a in a recording that that really matters because people can call you on it but when in a performance it is way more important for things to be vertically in tune to feel as vertically in tune as as often as possible throughout the song than whether or not you've migrated down by the time you ended in in or up or whatever 
in, in my mind as a, as a listener of music, that is way less important to me. Yeah. I, I, com I completely share that sentiment. Um, I think the worst thing is what we, what we call pitch heroes who <laughs> will refuse to go with where the choir is going. Yeah. That is so excruciating. Like, it is, it's, it's, it's rude it's, too. It's, it's <laughs> such a rude move. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. Yeah. And that's why, you know, singing what we what we like to say contextual singing is really paramount to, to anything. I mean it is why it's why people with perfect pitch that is so coveted um unnecessarily in my in my opinion. Yeah, it really among, shouldn't you know, be. I mean if and, yeah. <laughs> If if your if your coveted ma magical amazing natural talent can be replaced by someone with a tuning fork going bing, like I I, I just don't know how <laughs> impressive that is. I I actually think the reason that 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 people covet perfect pitch more than anything else is is because uh, because largely the people without perfect pitch struggle with sight reading, and I think they imagine that perfect pitch is kind of a uh, shortcut. To, to better sight reading and that mm -hmm. that that might be true but but uh but i but you can definitely be a good sight reader without it yeah so. i think um yeah i agree i think that's why that that's interesting to people yeah. but for those of you that don't have perfect pitch do not be discouraged yeah uh you're, don't try to you're develop perfect alone. pitch yeah, just just try to work on your sight even, reading and just singing. Just leave it tune. alone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can uh, you can. I, there's you have a smartphone. Just you know, get the little tuning fork and be like, oh, there's a four forty, and then leave it alone. Yeah, I mean, you can tell. You can sometimes tell when people have perfect pitch in a, in an ensemble because they they're last to budge. Yeah, you know, like the, the if, choir if shifting. They ever do. From, yeah. Yeah. The choir shifting to another place. Maybe they're going a little flat, a little sharp, and uh, there's someone that's just hasn't gotten the memo because they're, you know, and, and perfect pe people, they will often like write the notes in the music if you've transposed it. Yep. So, you know, if the if the piece is written in C and we want to go up half, they're writing. D flat, E flat, F. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. In that in that notes, setting, I mean... it always feels more like a handicap to me. Like I, I, yeah. I don't. Uh, it 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 doesn't seem like a like a blessing. Yeah. But we don't need. Uh, I, 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 I I now I'm starting to feel bad. Like we're like we're uh, calling out our our perfect pitch friends. <laughs> oh <laughs> it's, no, it's they... totally fine, and they're brave for dealing with. You know who own. you are. <laughs> I I find them to be incredibly brave uh dealing with their their handicap. <laughs> um let's see. A few other things I want to add is um let's see. I think there's a person uh, I think personally on like a I think people need to be willing to kind of try to listen to to intonation or tuning criticism. You know, it's it really, I think in, especially in professional settings, I think people tend to be quite sensitive to, to tuning criticism, especially. Uh, singers, in my experience, tend to accept this better than players in the professional mm. setting. Uh, and I, I love singers for that. I think singers are, um, well, I, I don't know. They, they just are so, they just down. You know? Yeah. And, but it does, you know, take a willingness to adjust and, and to, yeah. um, no, I, I completely agree. I, uh, uh, as, as, as someone who, who gets criticism from time to time, uh, I, I generally take it one of two ways. Either uh, it, it's actually a good call to action because I wasn't paying att enough attention. Uh, and so mm -hmm. I, uh, the way that I interpret a, a pitch criticism is usually like in my head, I, I go, oh, well, I should I need to pay better attention to my intonation at that piece of the music generally, but specifically there. 
Um, that, and, and in that case, it's actually, you know, I, I have no problem taking that and moving on. The, the part where, where it gets uh, more frustrating internally is if I was actively paying attention and deliberately placed the note where I thought it should be. Uh, that, that, that there's more internal strife there. Um, generally speaking, I still take it the same way. I go, okay, well, uh, you know, I, I, I think I, I must have missed something in the larger context. So when we get back to that section, I'm going to really, really hone in. Uh, if I, if I still wind up, uh, sort of inadequately, you know, singing high enough or, or low enough or whatever, then it comes down to, um, uh, to just going okay well i'll 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 trust that that my sense of tuning at that moment is uh is is not accurate for whatever reason i that's that is really challenging to internalize after you've spent 30 years trying to build that up uh but but then you just you go okay well it's fine let me just try to sing this a little bit lower or a little bit higher uh and and see what happens um yeah yeah but um i i i i i actually uh I, I just want to say for anybody who hasn't heard the anecdote, uh, when when Mark and I were in boy choir, uh, we we had a we had a director who at one point asked the whole choir, uh, "What what do you guys need to do to correct your singing if I tell you you're singing flat?" Um, and there's like a whole host of answers that are are mainly focused on production, um, which which might actually help in some respect, you know, improving your breath support or you know taking deeper breaths or using better vowels, brighter vowels. Um, but, but they're all kind of, uh, they're, they're all kind of uh, in, incidental if they do make corrections or changes to pitch. Um, after everybody sort of provides these, these, these sort of mechanism corrections, he, he stops us and says, sing higher, which at the end yeah. of the day, when you're making pitch corrections, if someone, if, you know, if Mark says, uh, Oren, you need to sing a little, a little bit higher here. And if my, if my pitch sense is saying, I, I think I'm putting it in the right place at the end of the day, I just need to add a, a little bit more gusto and, uh, yeah. and, and place the pitch a little bit higher. Cause it is possible. Yeah. Um, it, I, it is possible to, yeah. to approach it that simply. Anyway. I like that. I, and I fully agree. Um, we should talk more about that in a little bit. I have a little section for that. Sure. Sounds good. Um, and, and one other thing, uh, the piano, just a tool, or really the piano is your friend, even in accompanied singing. There are, all, there are a lot, there are a lot, surprisingly, that are walking around, you know, complaining that the piano is in tune and it's unhelpful in unaccompanied singing. No, no. It, if you, if you've, We've learned anything from our bout in virtual choir land over the last two years, where we are snapping the note to the nearest equal tempered, right? Like, so, you know, you get a track, mm -hmm. a vocal track, and you can yeah. pitch it, right? And so we're snapping it to the nearest equal tempered. We know from that, from that experience, you know, even equal temperament, even if you have all of the notes snap there, it's gonna sound in tune. It's gonna, it's gonna sound, sound good. pretty good. Yeah. It's gonna I mean look at um our Inunio recording. I mean that's great. And it's people singing, you know, in, in temperament of a piano. So I understand the reasons why you don't literally want to do that, you know, you want because it doesn't give you thirds, there are all these whatever, you think in just intonation land do but the piano in this respect vertically and horizontally like it's so nice to be able to check you know, kind of chant and um you know see cl click the note on the piano did you, did you end in the bass maybe you did that's maybe uh maybe uh you need to make an adjustment but uh the piano is a useful tool uh for this yeah so i, I just want to i just throw that before no I, I i agree with that i i think uh yeah i i generally totally agree with that i think uh i think when when there are uh when there when there when there are voices saying they'd rather not sing with the piano as as i have sometimes done historically it's it's usually uh 
it's usually much more like if you have gone to the efforts to, you know, play with a guitar or whatever and kind of develop exactly what your sense of it is, it, it it's, it's, it's a, it, obviously that, that might be slightly different than equal temperament, but generally speaking, like you were, you were never wrong. If, if you were, if you were singing along with a piano uh, and your choir sing along with the piano, it is, ne it's never wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So hundred, hundred percent agree. <clears throat> okay let's move on to and i threw this t topic in last minute um tuning phenomenon oh nice <laughs> um so i have i just have i don't this a short topic because um well i did this line and uh there's i don't have a lot but i i oddly find singing in uh, flat keys much easier to stay in tune than singing in white keys like F major for example yeah. C major is always annoying D minor F that's those keys tend to be difficult to yeah. lock in um, yep. and Whereas I'm a, wondering a flat like if... a flat feels like you could do it uh, like with with zero practice and it's always going to stay in yeah tune. yeah yeah, A flat major seems to A flat E flat. Know. Right, like never. Yeah, it never, yeah. It's hard like, for it to go. Anywhere. They're like perfectly vibed with the human brain, or or, or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's the meaning of musical love that yeah, in exactly. A flat major. Yeah, um, exactly. yeah. I, I, have you ever have you ever wondered why or like why that that yeah exists? <laughs> I don't I don't know if I have. Uh, you know, this is probably an, an area where research is required. Um, I, I don't, I don't, yes, I have wondered why I don't, I don't even have theories there. I, I, I particularly, I, I share your difficulty. I think F is difficult to sing in. I think G is, is difficult to sing in too, yeah. like, which is weird yeah. because A flat is so close and A flat's easy to sing in. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it is super weird. I, I don't, I don't really get it. Um. I, I am open to the possibility. Yeah, I know. A flat major. A hundred percent agree, Sarah. <laughs> hard, hard, hard. hard. Uh, yeah. I, I, my, uh, I am open to the possibility that, that this could be environmental, that it, it could be that, that you and I have sung so much A flat, E flat, D flat music, because oftentimes are, uh, you know, these early music editions that, that we've sung with Tudor choir, or whatever are set in those keys maybe i haven't looked at the data maybe there is a, an over prevalence of those keys and so somehow you know some of that has seeped in that's i'm open to that possibility but i i don't know i don't know the answer there it could just be it could just be that the, the human soul is vibrating at a flat <laughs> <laughs> you know you know <laughs> i like that not to get too crystally on you but yeah yeah and um another weird thing is that i feel like spacing has a big effect uh, on how easy it is to tune, um, 100%. you know, like like the Allegri Miserere, which everyone knows, but I don't know if people know that it's really diff, just a bitch to tune. I mean, because the spacing, you know, especially with that higher one, is quite spread. So you have low yep. G in the bass, and then what the tenor is on a B flat, a tenth above, and yep. um, that really, you know, when things are spread apart, it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to kind of really ground into the key yeah um i can't think of any other pieces though th where we have to fight that um usually in polyphony everything's pretty close together so it's easy to yeah. tune but yeah I, ag I agree i think i think the allegri is probably the most challenging piece to to keep to to tune both vertically so that it sounds good and uh, and horizontally so that it, it stays in the same place it started. Uh, mm -hmm. and I, I think, I think it, I don't, I, again, I, maybe I, I'm lacking the data here. This is just my internal, uh, gut, but my, my gut feeling is that the reason that it gets difficult with all of that space is that tendency to kind of slightly shrink some of those large intervals. Like, like I think octaves do sound a little bit better if you squish them, uh, so when you when you start having a chord that has multiple octaves involved, you you I think you get a tendency to kind of squish them in one one direction or the other. Typically, when when I've been involved with singing the Allegri, 
and maybe it's my fault, but <laughs> when I've been involved in singing the Allegri, <laughs> I, I have often noticed that it that it more often has a tendency to go down, to shunk down like the ending of of final yes. cadences da, than, it, than it does going up. Yeah. Yeah. So Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we all we all cheat. <laughs> I mean, there's there's usually ways of cheating to kind of keep that piece uh where it where it is. Or you just accept that it's gonna migrate. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I don't have any other weird thing. Um, you know, there are some scary properties that you kind of hinted at uh, that like thirds like to be a little low. Um, mm -hmm. I do like that also. Um, for, particularly in the bass part, if the bass is going from, you know, to fa, yeah. I, I do like to hear earth you know, on the, on the large, on the, on larger the larger side. side. Yeah. Like if you're going up from do to fa, you want that to be, to be tall ish. Yeah. To be tall ish. Yeah. And yeah. even, even from do to so as a bass part. Yeah. Like, yeah. but, but for sopranos, I, I don't feel the same way. I um, agree. Yeah. You know, I just, I like a shorter, shorter relative distance between do to fa on a soprano part and do to yeah. so. Totally agree. Yeah, um, I, I also yeah. I also feel the same way about uh, T to do. Uh, like I like to have I like to have that be big, ish. Yeah, like, big step uh, from T big, to do. Big step that big that half step should should feel girthy, <laughs> because otherwise, <laughs> if it's if it's if it's placed too close to do, it'll sound like just a, a flat do. It or, or 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 you know potentially something something like that i i like to really feel the 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 beats on on that on that half step so i really i like a low law yeah. in the top parts yeah um yeah for, for sure some, i i think it sounds very uh um pleasing to the ear for yeah. me um i think a there is a I worry that there's the, a person the, listening that's going, okay, low law top part, <laughs> high fa bottom part. Yes. <laughs> I I would say I would just caution that that, that I it, without more context, you probably should just go, oh, that's interesting and move move on. Yes, right. <laughs> Discover don't, don't these really... tendencies for yourself. Yeah. Um the, uh I sometimes people I think try for two low of thirds. Or uh, too low of major yeah. thirds. That is a tendency in in early music groups. In yeah. my in my opinion, I hear yeah. a low third, and they're like, okay, well that's that's too low. So yeah, you know, it's it almost sounds better. yeah. You know, it's like a yeah, like a sharp minor third. Yeah. Well, it, it comes off to me as like it's like you're trying too hard. Just just yeah. calm down a little bit. You know, I'll just settle down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, no, I I agree. I mean, I I like I like a, a lower third than the piano, for instance. But yeah. like, you know, I I don't want to go crazy. I don't want I don't want it to be so low that that people go that that's a low third. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> job. Nice job. Nice <laughs> low third. A nice that's low not a third. Compliment ever anyone ever gives. Uh, <laughs> genuinely. <laughs> right. Unironically. Yeah. Um. Okay, let's move on to okay. mistakes, correcting <sighs> intonation. Um, so I don't know how the quality is. I'm getting like mixed. Is yeah, it... it's. I mean, it's kind of. It kind of comes and goes. I. I think your audio is still pretty good consistently ish there's some hiccups but the video gets pixely from time to time that's my experience anyway i don't i don't know how how I'm listeners check might my... be. Okay, sorry about that. I just wanted to see. I've been following <laughs> it on my phone here a little bit on a, on our 5G to see what the quality is like. Nice. Never again. Anyway. Yeah, well, it's good. It's a good learning experience. 
um so the some some mistakes um that that i see people making when they're trying to improve intonation or even how they talk about it i think we both agree here that it does start with hearing it right i mean you have to know what you're aiming for so yeah i, I agree so it's a two it's a two part thing um mm -hmm. you have to hear it and then you have to be able to reproduce what you're hearing and so many people um so many teachers start with production first mm -hmm. and yes production is part of the puzzle it's part of it but you first need to make sure that the person is hearing has the right note in their head Mm -hmm. I don't know what you if you if you have any I think we probably agree here if you have any more to add to that. Yeah, no, I I think uh I I could probably rant for 5 minutes restating these same things over and over again, but uh I'll spare everyone. I I just I compl I completely agree. I I I I think I mean I I just to 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 uh to to sort of listen to the 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 counter voices of of which I've seen uh, several on, on, on Facebook in the past. Um, I, I do, I do respect that you, you have to have facility to sing notes, to be able to accurately produce the note that you're trying to produce. I, I totally agree with that. Uh, to, to, to go back to the basketball metaphor, if you're not strong enough to like throw the basketball, it doesn't matter if you know where to put it. Um, right. But, but also, uh, if you are a blind <laughs> and you are very strong uh and you you can you have perfect form you're never gonna make any any shots that way either you have to you you have to know what you're aiming at um uh, otherwise you have you have no hope of singing in tune yeah yeah it's this is not a perfect example but i think uh I mean to go to go so hard on production um in some cases let me just throw that caveat out there it's yeah. like when a flute player plays out a tune to go hard on their technique or or like a instrument you know that's not what you do first yeah sure maybe yeah. that has an effect yeah but but I think it's worth diagnosing first that the person has the right note in mind yep um I, I think uh, let me let me try to give let me let me try to speak up for some people that I that I think probably think that facility has a larger role to play. I I will I will I will I will uh, I will say this. I do think that if you don't pay attention to your intonation, like if you're not thinking about it at all, uh, that I think if you have a, a natural kind of like good sense of 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 intonation but you're not actually paying attention to what you're singing and your production is uh, very easy. Like it's easy for you to reproduce notes. You're probably less likely to sing out of tune uh, and stated another way. You're more likely to sing in tune, but uh, I would, I would say that that's, that's not really the way that you should solve that problem because that's not consistent replicatable success. That is you're, you are, if you make your facility so easy that you can you can kind of potentially sing more in tune without thinking about it, uh, the 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 main problem there, the problem with that sentence is the without thinking about it. When you when you turn over your your intonation to your autopilot, you're you're always going to eventually sing out of tune. Like no matter how good your facility is, you have to pay attention to it. I, I do think the, the the worse your facility is, the harder it is to make notes. If you're not paying attention to your intonation, you're gonna sing really out of tune. Yeah. But I do I do think if you pay really, really close attention to your into, intonation, even if you don't have a great voice, you can sing in tune. I agree. Yeah. Well, we had a question that Margaret put in. Um yep. that that went by um would you say that a lot of this stuff sort of flies by in the moment 
and it's really only possible to finesse at perhaps ending chords? That's a that's a good question. I mean, you can't 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 really dwell on tuning every vertical slice in a piece. I think what the ear is more more drawn to is how you're singing um, horizontally, you know, because people are hearing things hearing kind of individual lines rather than vertical slices up until maybe the end where they have enough time, you know, where we get to a cadence and there's enough time to process what's happening quickly. Um, this, uh, this brings me to a point that I wanted to make earlier uh, that in my opinion, you in, in a chamber ensemble, and I think I'll, I might get some hate for this, but a lot of the whether or not um, something stays in in its right key has a lot to do with the soprano's tuning. Because they, when we're tuning, when we're singing contextually, like along with other instrument, uh, other singers, we have to, we're listening to each other. We're listening to, so we can fit in. Now, the sopranos have the hardest part because they're, the most audible, and they are, uh, and they, I think, have a harder time hearing below them than the rest of us hear um, hear them. So, they have a really difficult difficult job, and it'll be very possible. I would say it w it's nearly impossible to, if your goal is to start and end in the same key. It's nearly impossible if the soprano line uh, is, you know, isn't doing a good job holding the holding the key. Um, I know I put that to you. What do you? What yeah, do you no, I agree. That? I agree completely. I, I, uh, I, I mean, we we were both boy sopranos, and I I remember like when you're up in the stratosphere. Uh, I remember back in the day, just uh, yeah, having a really tough time hearing hearing below me i remember actually uh we were just about uh, to go on tour to the uk in 95 and i i had several several solo parts in the in the stab at mater the paragolese and i we get through this performance and i'm like feeling great i'm like i sang i sang the crap out of that i sound so good and we we i think the uh, next day or the next rehearsal before we're gonna head out on tour uh, Joe takes me and, and some of the other folks, uh, some of the other older guys uh, <laughs> into the room and we listened to a recording of it and I was singing so sharp and I had no idea cause I, I, I literally couldn't hear what was going on below me. So like, it felt I felt good though. It felt, oh yeah. It feels so good. Cause you're like, Oh, I've, I sound so good. It's just me and it sounds amazing. <laughs> so I, I, I feel, I feel for the Sopranos. I, I totally get it. I mean, it, tuning vertically as a soprano, I think, is uh, is probably nearly impossible. I think they they just have to focus on horizontal tuning, like whether or not they're thinking of an anchor point to come back to, or or just using the previous note to measure. I I think you're totally right there. Yeah, and if you don't if you don't have a soprano section that is doing that well, uh, you are destined to go up or down to follow the the whims of the soprano part. Yeah, I think ideally you do want to tune from the bottom up. You know, you have a bass part, they sing their note, and then you just keep layering all the voices. That's yeah. a very nice way to tune. Yeah, uh, and that's how I would tune a guitar. Also, yeah. start from the bottom notes first. But yeah. practically speaking, it's that that's just not how it works. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I think I think it it it's a little bit dynamic in the sense that if the soprano part is down in their like middle voice, you know, they're sure. they're singing in the octave between middle C and the next one. Uh, then they can, they should, there's no excuse. They should be able to listen vertically. Uh, but it's when they're, when they're in their upper register. Yeah. You, th yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, we, we all have to, we're, we all have to, to support them. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Margaret and Ruth. <laughs> yeah. You, you guys do a great job. I mean, you guys do a great job. <laughs> that's amazing. That's, that's all there is. There's, there's video evidence of that. Uh, the, the other thing I actually wanted to say to Margaret's question earlier is, uh, whether or not it's possible the the way that i'm i don't know if i'm interpreting it right but the way that i read that is uh can you really focus on vertical tuning at, 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 in 
in any moment other than the ending, the final chord. Um, and I think definitely the final chord is when you have the most time and energy and mental space to do it. I, I find that, uh, that you're, 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 you, you're not really able to do it sort of the first run through, but, but generally the more you sing through a piece of music, the, the more I find personally that I go, oh, in, I, I, I suddenly start hearing it like maybe the second, third, fourth time, different places where I go, oh, if I, if I scooch this up just a little bit, that chord sounds a little better. Even, even if I only hold it for you know, a couple quarter notes and it's, it's just kind of a, a flash in the pan, you, you, I, do, I do find myself kind of noticing those moments if I, if I, pay, it, if I pay active attention to the other parts around me. I definitely don't get it the first time. If there's, if, if my brain is focusing on reading the notes and just reproducing them and, you know, staying with the, the conductor and, you know, listening to my singing part, there's a lot of moving parts there, but the more familiar you get with the music, the more you're, you're able to, to kind of notice and pay attention to those other vertical moments so that you can tune more than just the final chord. Yeah. That's good. That's very good. Yeah. Th there's a, I want to talk about vowels. A little bit and <laughs> and there is th this association you know when people are approaching tuning corrections by way of vowel that i don't like which is that vowel and pitch are hand in hand they work hand in hand together um i think it's important to really think of them as separate musical entities mm -hmm. and that really should, you know, really, if you're trying to modify a vowel to correct intonation, it should be clear that, you know, that you're, that it, it is being used as, as a way to, as a way to either um, raise or low pitch, not as, you know, it'll just be in tune suddenly if you sing your vowels this way. Right. I, I find that unhelpful and I just wish there there's there's a lot of I wish people would stop associating pitch and vowels so closely. Uh and on the issue of blending, if I may go there. Please with people that that st that still think like a blend um between two voices, you know, where they sound the same has mm -hmm. anything to do with vowel. It's just not true. And um, it really is pitch matching. Like if you're getting two people or three to sing or to sing with perfect blend, I'll keep using that word. Mm. Uh, it is pitch. And let me let me see if I can persuade everyone. I made a little video to help demonstrate this. Uh, we'll see how it works. Knowing that we've having we've been running into some your internet connection looks great right now, so I think do it do problems. it right now while it while it sounds okay. Great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um. So this is this is a a video of me and Margaret ten years ago singing different vowels together. Um. Here we go. Let me actually put the chat away for a second <laughs> and let's put us like this nope yeah, that that's good. not let's see i want to put this one above oh can i can i move okay well let's do it mm. <laughs> maybe that's the most I need to figure out how to rearrange these windows. Um, let's see. Oh, here we go. Can you still hear me, Oren? Yep. Okay. So everyone that's that's watching, this is me and Margaret singing different notes and vowels. So here is, um, I'm just going to play through it once, and then we'll go back and I'll try to explain this.
So let me play this again. So what we have here first is one person singing ooh. So this is Margaret. She's just singing ooh by herself so everyone knows what that sounds like. And this isn't this isn't uh this isn't pitched or anything. This next example is if you duplicated Margaret's track and played them together. So this is that exact same example played twice, um, or I should say layered on top of each other. So we have two instances of that first example. You'll notice that it sounds exactly the same, actually. Maybe, maybe slightly louder than the first example, but it's, it's just the same person, the same example, doubled. Um, so this, this next example is of, uh, Margaret singing ooh, and me in my ugly countertenor voice singing E at the same time. So two totally different vowels. Kind of weird, right? But we're singing two different vowels and we're, and we're trying to tune it together, you know, to sing the same pitch at the same time. And here is an example of Margaret singing the E vowel and me singing an O vowel at the same time. And then the final example is of um, Margaret singing, let's see, what does she say? She's singing um, an O vowel and then there's another one just a few cents lower. Just a few cents lower than um, than the note. So same same vowel, but not the pitch isn't quite matched by just a few cents. I think it's like five cents or something, five or ten cents. Uh, let me f throw us back online. Uh, um, there you are. Are you there? Yep, I'm here. I was yeah. just muting to make sure that I didn't interfere with the, the sound. That's great. Oh, and, and, we, uh, and yes, Sara, we call that super voice. Of course we do. When, when two parts are singing the exact, exact same note. But I think that example really just shows how unimportant, you know, vowel is. I mean, yeah, you can tell a difference if someone's singing an E vowel versus an O vowel. Like if they're singing that dramatic difference of vowels together. Um, but for the purpose of, say, like a unified or blended sound, it really is about matching pitch. And um, I do hope choral directors will maybe make one, the choral directors that are still all about the vowel might let it go a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I honestly think uh, that this is, this is actually probably the last thing I, I, it, is it okay if I, I rant for just like a minute or so? <laughs> <laughs> go for it. <laughs> a rant short, away. A short, a short rant. I, I honestly think the the reason that that the directors uh, focus on vowels um, is because it is it, it is so difficult figuring out what to say to correct pitch problems. I I honestly I think that's the main reason that that people talk about it, and I I also think that uh, that there in the end I don't think it would be as prevalent a misnomer. Uh, if it weren't somewhat effective. Now I, I know that's gonna sound that's gonna sound crazy, but but I'm gonna explain why I think it's effective <laughs> and still a misnomer. I think I think it's effective because generally speaking, repetition yields better intonation, generally speaking. Yeah. And so I think when when directors get frustrated because things are out of tune and they might turn and say, 
uh, you know, we need to all have pure vowels or, or, or whatever. Um, let's try it again. It's, it's going to sound better kind of regardless. Not, not only have you given the choir the specific direction of, you know, do something with your vowels, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> um, but you have, you have told them that it sounds out of tune to you. Uh, and you're giving them an opportunity to try again. And it comes back to this being a percentage game and, and a focus game. And, and singers knowing that they, they didn't do quite a good enough job singing in tune the first time, uh, and they're going to get another shot, it's going to get better. You could almost say nothing, but it didn't sound great that time. Let's try it again. Yeah. And it would get better. So I, I think that's where those kind of, of, of misnomers come from. I think a director throws out a thing out of frustration. It doesn't sound good enough. Uh, and then they see that it gets better and they go, oh, it must have been that thing that I said about vowels. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Um, the it's And it's, you know, there's a there's a lot more to music, you know, than the tuning and being so crazy about it. Um, yep. Absolutely. Uh, but for me, or if you're doing acapella music, it does add that sparkle, you know, and uh, it is, I kind of put the onus on directors a little bit to, to have, to have, you don't need to have, you know, the best ears in the world, but you got to be able to give some direction, you know, in this way and and, and to, ideally to care about it to, to yes. care about it i think that's what it is right like to yeah. right to care about it and and to say and and to be equipped to say hey um alto's a little higher here or you know to, yeah, to try, yeah. even just trying it you know the, you yep. don't even um you don't get a directors don't get it's not like you just wake up and you have a great ear for this sort of thing you have to like totally try it out you know it's like totally. i think you know sopranos try singing this little lower and see what yep. happens you know yeah. um it's it, i really believe anyone can can every director can feel eventually feel comfortable doing this stuff it's just uh, they just have to try it um 100 agree yeah did you have more to rant about Oren, or was that it no, no, that that was that oh. was basically it. That it's really it's really just uh, you know it it it. I think if if any if any if there are any takeaways to intonation from a singer's perspective, uh, that it really it it really is just a percentage game. Don't get too down on yourself if you sang out of tune. Just try harder the next time, and pay attention to it. It doesn't. It's intonation is not something that happens. Good intonation does not happen by accident. It happens with deliberate, focused, consistent attention. If you yeah. aren't, if you aren't thinking about it, you will sing out of tune. Period. Yeah, and this is why being able to read and being able to relieve some of your resources, your mental faculties or resources to, so you have the attention to pay attention to pay attention yep. to tuning. Yeah, uh, all that stuff will help. I mean, if you don't need to be a great sight reader, you just, you know, make sure you know your music cold so you can come in and start worrying about this sort of thing. Totally. Um, and record yourself um, and he and play it back and see how you're doing. It's just a lot of, uh, it takes a lot of this kind of work. And yeah, don't be discouraged and just keep at it. I really think that anyone can, sing in tune um yeah if if you you know just takes some work um it just takes practice you just gotta get get on the court start taking shots <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah okay so i think we're about to wrap this up but it looks like we have nine people watching we've had a steady seven to nine people watching i'm curious if there are any bad. other questions that i think a lot i think uh more people are going to be watching the the recording of this but I'm wondering if nice. anyone live out there has has any questions they want to throw in. I'll give it a second here. Sounds good. I'm just looking over my notes. I I made a little bit of notes beforehand about making sure I wanted to talk about it, uh, everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, I think I got everything. Yeah, I mean, feel free to jump in there. 
no, I think this is this is this is awesome. Oh, you know what? I did actually want to say one other thing. Yeah, I, I almost forgot about this. Um, I I think sometimes during the course as a singer, during the course of your singing career, uh, it, singers can sometimes pick up these these sort of learnings uh, that they hold on to dearly where they say, you know, I always sing this thing flat. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to correct there. Mm. Sometimes they do that in a, a specific piece of music. Uh, sometimes they'll do that in, in just generally, I always sing D's sharp. So I'm going to bring them down or I always sing D's flat. So I'm going to bring them up. Uh, these, these kind of, you kind of, as a singer, you kind of accumulate pitch criticisms from all the directors you've, you've ever gotten them from. Uh, and I, the only thing that I would, I, I wanted to address on this podcast specifically is that those, those deserve, those deserve to be reevaluated over time. Don't, don't, don't take a one-time pitch criticism and make it a hard and fast rule for you, uh, forever. Because yeah. It, it may not be the case. Not, not for particular, it's, it's bad for a particular piece of music. Like if someone says, Hey, your your F was it has always been sharp on this on at this point in the music. It's it's terrible to go, oh, that F should always be higher because that will result in weird things and you making weird decisions every time you, you sing that piece of music. Right. So. Unfortunately, this isn't that easy. You know, yeah. it isn't this isn't um having good tuning isn't um it's not set it and forget it. This is yeah. not a Ron Copia <laughs> product. Like, yeah. Right. It's a constant <clears throat> Um, it's a skill that needs constant sort of refinement. And uh, yep, Margaret says it was at least ten year journey before me before I had any confidence with tuning. It's still not perfect. I've accepted this is a lifelong journey. No destination, just one long through hike. Yeah, I completely agree, Margaret. I. It's there's there's no such thing as an in tune singer. I mean, there are people that sing more in tune than others, but you can't ever put it down and say, "Oh, well, now I sing perfectly." Yeah, I'm, in tune. I'm good now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because uh, you will you will get humbled in the worst way if if you make that decision. So yeah, that's exactly that's exactly how I think about it too. Any, it's any so... choir rehearsal, any performance, you can if you are not paying attention to the right thing, you can be the the most out of tune, heinous singer in it. It's so satisfying at the end of a chord. Everyone, I'm sure, every singer has felt this, where you arrive at a cadence and it's perfectly in tune. So may, at a cadence, you have the you have enough time to make those micro adjustments, you know, where you have a pure where you have pure intervals just stacked on top of each other. And for me, that is one of the best things about singing unaccompanied, uh, is that is the sound that comes out of that. It's it's this weird like block it's it's like something else you're hearing something else when all the when all the notes are are clicked or in there were in the in the right place um you hear some overtones often on recordings well we've experienced that in our recordings like just weird overtones because of um notes that the intervals that are just very in tune um so it's it's worth it it's worth the yeah. audience audience tell that's like yeah i feel like in polyphony that's what they want mm -hmm. yeah they're they're looking yeah they're they're like excited about the the music in the middle the renaissance stuff the history but they they want to get you know they want their final chord they want the final chord yeah they want a good final chord yep yeah i i completely agree yeah any other comments before we wrap this puppy up? I like all the, on the on my phone. It has all these people that are watching. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it has the names of them. I know. I know who you are. Who are watching right now. <laughs> um. But okay. Nice. Well. It was a pleasure. I, I always pleasure. love talking about tuning. I uh, if if anybody wants to talk more about tuning, oh hey, hey Jeff, boss hey, man, Jeff, Jeff on the uh, on the stream. Hey, gotta say out of 
out of out of the priest that can't jeff jeff can yeah jeff <laughs> <laughs> you like that jeff that was for you oh that's that's terrible but it's yeah. it's true it's yeah, true jeff, jeff got good pitch one of the best uh priest yep. canters in in the modern hard world hard agree hard Brent, agree. Uh, i appreciate that brent it's good to see you sort of in the chat yeah yeah uh Sorry if the quality of this was uh, <laughs> hit and miss, but uh, we'll make corrections for the next one. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm all I'm curious if for people that disagree too. I mean, I'm I totally want to hear people um, what, what people think if they if they have a different opinion um, about this, and uh, really welcome welcome to it. Um, uh, yeah, I yeah. would I would love I would love to hear dissenting opinions here. Yeah. I uh, um if, yeah. if 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 we we or I am wrong about something, I I I I love hearing uh other people, you know, call me out on it. So if you guys totally. have an opinion, anybody listening to this now or later, uh, you know, pay you know where to find I, us. I, I, yeah, exactly. Let's have that conversation. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Keith. I, I, thanks for tuning in. I'm glad you found the examples helpful. I'll, I'll probably post them on YouTube or something along with this uh, talk. And um, um, I guess we'll just sign out for now. Uh, and uh, thanks, Orrin, for yeah. For uh, thanks for having for me. your time. Thanks for having me on this choir nerd. <laughs> it's been a little while. <laughs> Yeah, on this right. restream, we have all these uh, cool audio um, outros. I don't know, people. All right, let's let's get down. I know. Or if, uh, let's see. Um, I'm getting a little pre-dance on. Oh, there we go. Here's a little treat for the audience. Yeah. Man, we can't. Uh, hang on, I can't end. I can't end. I can't end it on a hip hop track. Just one second. Okay, wait, wait for it. Um, what about chill? Okay. Well, that's nice. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you have a great weekend. Happy Friday, and uh, Oren, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Sounds good, man. I'll see you All soon. All right. Thank you.